Yes, all right, guys, what's going on? Winning with Blends. Today, what we're gonna do is talk about whew, a lot. We gotta talk about phasing, okay? We're gonna talk about the Spacer plugin. And we're going to have to break this into two separate videos because this plugin is actually really deep. So let's dive in. Honestly, why not right now? First things first, the Spacer enhances the stereo image of your input sounds. So first things first, let's talk about phase cancellation or what it means for something to be out of phase in your audio. So what is phase in audio? What is phase? Okay, phase is the position of a sound wave in time. I know that's just like, what? Okay, what, what does that mean? Waveforms have positive and negative values. So think of an X axis. The waveforms go up and down, and essentially there's a start point to a wave, right? The relation to the amplitude of frequencies is where we can find how these negative and positive values can cause phasing. So let's dive a little deeper. Two identical signals that are completely in phase are ones where the waveforms begin at exactly the same time. The two signals would be fully out of phase if one of those signals were phase shifted by 180 degrees, okay? Waves move in cycles, as we know. And these two waves, for example, these two waveforms would be at the exact opposite point in the cycle if the phase shifted if the if the phase was shifted 180 degrees for any one of these two waves okay so this is due to destructive interference identical waveforms that are phase shifted by 180 degrees would cancel each other out when summed so let's put it this way imagine two identical forces pushing in opposite directions they'd essentially cancel each other out. So this actually results again in total silence. Imagine that. You could have two extremely loud sounds that are phase shifted by 180 degrees and they literally cancel each other out, okay? Because of those negative and positive values in the amplitude of these specific frequencies, okay? Phasing may result in a thinner or even a tinny sound when both signals are played together. So that's one way you can just you can determine whether you have sounds that are in phase or out of phase, okay? So let's dive into the spacer plugin again. This is the first because there's another video that we're gonna have to dive into to take this a step further. And I think you guys will all understand when we start getting to the bottom of what we're dealing with 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 just the basic uh, settings here and when we look at phasing okay so let's look at the phaser each of these parameters right here that you see represents a separate stage in the processing chain from left which is the input to right which is the output all right one thing to note very very carefully and very right away, uh, soon very early is to note the phase meters down below okay you'll notice the input phase and the output phase okay these there's an input and an output phase meter, as you see, and so you can monitor the effects of the following controls as we go on, all right? The meter shows the proportions of the left and right channel output uh, audio that is, sorry, input or output that is in phase. So 100% mono is when it's to the right, and 100% stereo is when this is to the left, okay? The peak holding, which you'll see this peak hold, you'll see this lingering white line here. You guys just take note of where my where my cursor is. You'll see this white line. This shows the 500 millisecond averaged value. All right. So it lingers a bit, so you can get a bit of a, a bit of time uh, to kind of see where the the again where the average is. Okay. So do note these two meters are going to help you a lot once you start messing with these knobs and and uh, posi positions here and modes right in these different settings you'll know when your sound is out of phase by either using your ears to listen for that tinny sound maybe that uh, thinner sound or using your eyes to to really just clearly see when something is in phase or out of phase all right let's go a little deeper okay guys so left and right inversion as you see right here uh you can invert the phase of the left or the right or both as you see right here left right and both Right, let's leave that open so you guys can see that. And of course, nothing is not going to adjust. It's clearly not going to adjust anything, right? Now, inverting one of these channels of a mono signal 
will produce an unnatural sound, all right? Because the, this phase inverter, or sorry, the spacer part of me is working with, you know, the left signal and the right signal. But if there's nothing to really adjust in the left or right that's different, then you're going to have some odd sounds and it might actually kind of be difficult to locate exactly where that sound is in space. And the phase meter will show 100% in phase, all right? Now, let's dive deeper so we can kind of get a better idea. So let me, I'm going to switch this to left just so you guys, again, please, Grab some headphones if you don't have them. Pause the video. Grab headphones. Uh, a mono speaker is great, but you're not going to get the full effect because we're dealing with spacer, which is working with the left and the right signals to enhance stereo. So please do get some headphones or turn up your speakers so you can hear the differences with these settings. Okay? I'm just going through some of these settings, and we're going to see exactly how we can dive in and use these for different sounds. But again, like I said, this is the first of multiple videos, right? And of course, as well, down below, I have an analyzer tool set to the stereo so you can actually see visually what is being changed here. All right, let's move on to the left and right delay. Now it kind of does exactly what you think. It's a time delay offset for the left or the right channels, right? And that creates a false stereo effect. Guys, towards the end of the video, I'll pin a video that I created on the Haas effect for the uh, stereoizer plugin, all right? So as you see, we're delaying the left and the right effects. Uh, sorry, right, left and right stereo output. Okay, let's do this more to the left. It's gonna sound kind of wavy. Let me put it to the max. See, so if you notice, the right is hitting first and the left side is hitting second. So I'm delaying the left. Listen carefully. Okay, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that back up in a moment. Let's do this in the meantime, why not? Okay. So this setting, this left-right delay, can be useful for creating stereo from a mono source or increasing the width of a stereo sound, okay? Let's go back here. Okay, let's turn this all the way to the right. And you'll hear, the left is gonna hit first. I mean, you could see it clearly with the visualizer down here as well. Right? So that delay is great. Now, not all of these functions, some of these functions work with mono. Some of them, honestly, simply don't do much of anything. Uh, most of them have some effect, but like, again, we'll just dive in and you guys will see what I mean. Okay? So be mindful of your sound use the analyzer and if you need you can boost the input gain so that you can actually get a bit more um, imagery more more data to work with okay if your sound is quiet okay so let's move on let's look at separation all right separation allows you to enhance or reduce the existing stereo effect Again, please monitor the phase positions right here, the meters. The middle position means it's disabled. Turn it to the right, will decrease the stereo, which is essentially summing the left and the right to mono. Look at this, how it's shrinking down. You see this? I turn the separation to the right, which means we're creating a mono signal. We're summing the left and the right. Now listen carefully, I'm gonna switch it all the way to the left. And there you go. We are increasing the stereo width. Now this sound is already pretty wide, but let's just listen to it with no separation. Let's listen carefully with the max separation. And now this is with default. Again, max separation. It should be wider. And then we're going to go back to the default. And now let's bring it back to mono. Right? We lost that space. We lost that depth. And you can see the visual representation right down here in the, in the uh, analyzer. So back to the default, okay? All right. Now, this control as this one has no effect on mono sounds. So if there's no difference in the left or the right signals, 
then there is essentially no stereo to enhance. Like I said, some of these tools here will be useful for mono or stereo sounds. Others, it just won't do anything. So if you got a voice, like your voice recorded through one microphone, that is a mono signal, and you're trying to separate your voice, it, there's nothing to separate because it came from one sound source, right? One mic, one sound source, okay. Let's look at pan, okay? Now pan changes the left and right channels levels to create a panning effect. Now there are cross mixing pans that add the left into the right signal or the right into the left channel, let's say, when you pan. But this particular pan knob right here maintains the independence of the left and the right signals. Let's do it right here. Let's do this right here. And I'm gonna pan to the right, okay? Ooh, check it out. Okay, panning 100%. As you see, it goes to the left. And let's go... Okay. All right, let's do that again. All right, okay. So work with the panner. <clears throat> Again, always watch your phase meters, with, especially with some of these particular uh, knobs here. Do watch your phase meters to, to make sure that you don't get that thin, that tinny or thin sound, as, and especially when you're blending two different sounds together, let's say, right? Uh, maybe similar sounds, maybe you recorded with a guitar, um, you know, a mic uh, amp and direct input or something. Use this to, to get a better idea of your phasing, okay? Now, the mid refers to the center pan and the side refers to the stereo pan, okay? So when we're looking at all of these other options as we continue on, okay? All right, let's put this back on for the moment, okay? So let's move on to mid side inversion, all right? Again, we're, in, we're talking about phasing, right? Where the mid is referring to the center pan and the side is referring to your stereo pan, right? So we'll definitely dive into some more mid side processing with the spacer in an upcoming video. But like I said, it's gonna get really deep. So we've gotta separate these two uh, videos. Let's go back here again, okay? So mid side inversion, right? <clears throat> Invert the phase of the mid and the side, or both, it's up to you, or of course of nothing, or nothing. Inverting just one will center your sound while maintaining the width of the original signal. So let's, let's vibe out to this one, and we'll bring this in in a quick moment, right? Um, you can also use the delay for similar techniques, but you, you can delay the mid or the side signal to add more depth to your sound. Let's try this mid side inversion, okay? Listen to this. Let's go through these. All right. When I invert both, that's when I notice the most difference. Listen carefully, guys. Let's bring this right back to the top, okay? Why don't we go right back to the top so that we get the full experience again? So this is both. This is nothing. The differences are subtle with this particular sound. It's a pretty broad sound. It's also coming right down the middle as well. So it, it represents itself well in the, in the mid as well as the side. So, um, Depending on the sound you're using, you may notice the mid-side inversion has a greater effect. Now this is side. Okay. And this is nothing. Back to the basic. Let's go back to mid. Now, of course, when you put these all together, right, you start to get different types of effects, okay? Let's continue on and, and uh, do a little bit more exploring. Let's put this right back to nothing and let this run a bit, guys. Guys, by the way, if you wanna check out this track, it is available in the link in the description. 
under my Mega Blends NFT collection. If you're really interested in this track right here, go ahead and grab it. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna move on to Midside Delay. Let's go back here. All right, Midside Delay is the use use this control essentially to create depth in your stereo field okay separation increases the stereo width of the signal by raising the volume of the signal of the side signals okay so let's go right back again to the beginning so that we can clearly hear this okay so moving this the knob to the right will delay the mono signals and moving it to the left will delay the stereo signals. Listen carefully. So currently I've got this knob moved all the way to the right. So I am delaying the mono signals. So it's hitting in the stereo first. Look at, look at the meter. You see those spikes is hitting, right? I'm going to pause it and I'm going to watch this. See that? It's hitting in the stereo right there, right there. It hits in the stereo before it hits in the mono. And then if I switch this all the way back to the left, we're now delaying. See it? There we go. See how I caught that? We're hitting the middle before we hit the sides, okay? So right down the middle is hitting first, and then the sides will appear, uh, will be present in your, in your audio and the output. Okay, so... Again, like I said, guys, we got to dive into two different videos because this plugin goes super, super deep. Um, I think it's one of the most complex plugins, but it's also one of the most useful and therefore allowing you to do some of the most advanced techniques. So I'll quickly go over mode because in actuality, this is this is why we need to do another video. It's because of the mode functionality. All right. So when you're working with mid side or, you know, signals, use this control to accept input or create, sorry, to create mid side, to, to accept, pardon me, to accept mid side input or create mid side output. So standard of course is, you know, just the standard stereo processing output mid side, the module or this tool here, this plugin will generate the mid which is the left pan and the side which is the right pan guys again we're gonna have to dive into this because this is in a completely separate video of its own to do more mid side processing within fl studio and we're going to get deep and really advanced i mentioned in one of my recent comments that i was working on some routing techniques and it does deal with this particular app or sorry pardon me plugin module right here and of course the input mid, mid side is going to essentially make this module expect mid and side data for processing all right so i'm just doing this for now input mid side output mid side this can really affect your audio by the way look at the phase meters look at the phase meters look okay look at the phase meters when i switch this to output watch when i go to input Okay. You don't want to be ran and then I go back to standard. And of course, the solo this. When I go back to standard, of course, we're you know we're completely fine. So I wouldn't randomly use this plugin uh just to try stuff. Yes and no. Use your ears, guys. That's one thing I have to say. You've got to use your ears because in, in a way, yes, the tools can give you a lot of insights as to what is really happening on a technical level, but ultimately it depends on the on the sound that you're trying to achieve right so guys what i want you to do is watch this video on the haas effect and the stereoizer plugin because i go in deep into it all right guys again winning with blends just the blends i'll check you guys on the other side all right all the best until next time take it easy guys